Hey guys, Ethan with FM Live here. Today we will be talking about how to make your Miata feel less like a rattly death trap and more just like a death trap that's nice to drive. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them down below in the comments and we will get to them at the end of the video um, or after the video in the comments. So if you're anything like me, you wanna take your car on long trips and daily drives and for it to be relatively quiet and not feel like your spine is actively disintegrating, quick disclaimer, you should have reasonable expectations when it comes to keeping your Miata quiet for NAs and NVs especially, but there are some relatively easy and or inexpensive things you can do to make your Miata experience just a bit more pleasant. So, first things first, What's the first thing most people think of when asked, how do I make my car ride better? Suspension. So having a well-matched spring and shock combination can make a huge difference to how your car rides for some probably obvious reasons. Quick side note, speaking from personal experience, blown out shocks are a bit of a nightmare to ride on. Um, if you are in the market for something uh, especially compliant and affordable, going with a set of either Kony STRTs or Kony Sports with stock springs or in the Kony Sports um, uh, ball camp is, you could also use our FM springs that can take your ride from kind of a wallowy disaster to more compliant and controlled. Um, you may also want to look at replacing all the other wear items in your suspension. That's another way to help remove any other wobbles or knocks or shakes, anything in that ballpark. For the most plush ride possible, it's generally a better idea to opt for rubber bushings rather than like, for example, polyurethane or Delrin. This goes for engine mounts, diff mounts, control arm bushings, upper shock mounts, you name it. So if you haven't already, I jack your car up and start poking around your suspension and check for ripped boots on the ball joints, maybe even you know, wiggle, shake, tap with a mallet, uh, some stuff to see if you can track down any bad ball joints or tie rods or something in that range. Um, so next up, we're gonna go over some commonly overlooked maintenance items. So if we go over to my trusty steed here, one thing a lot of people might not think about is your door latches. So after you open and shut your door, 12 million times over you know, 20, 30 years, these metal fingers in here can get worn out um, and that latch can get pretty haggard and leave your door not all the way closed. So having your door not all the way closed can create noise, you know, crazy how that works, right? Um, also worth noting, if you have heard of someone installing stiffer door bushings and having more rattles in their door, a lot of times that is because the door latches are worn out and that may or may not need to be replaced. Um, you may also want to look at, make sure I'm not rubbing the mic here, uh, your door trim moldings. So like this kind of stuff, all the trim in here. Sometimes, you know, people are doing projects like installing soft tops or installing a hard top or just replacing stuff altogether. A lot of times when they remove this, it can get chipped or worn out or ripped or otherwise, oops, yeah, like that. Um, and that can create some noise and not make your door seal as well as it could be letting in some wind noise or air noise or something on those in that ballpark. Um, you also want to look at your seals. There's the seals on your soft top and or hard top, depending on what you have or both. Um, Oftentimes these can be, you know, ripped or misaligned or something like that. Um, so if you want to look at like your soft top seals, for example, you can check for either poor window to seal contact, or sometimes they'll have some air gaps in there that you want to seal up. Make sure you're not getting any wind noise that way. Um, another thing to look for is maybe some window bushings. If you've never taken off your door card, there's probably a pretty good chance your window bushings are laying in the bottom of your door in 37 pieces. So if you can shake your window and nothing really happens, or if you close your door and you get a big rattle like that, there's a non-insignificant chance that those are probably ready to go. They're pretty cheap to replace. 
So won't be a bad idea to go grab yourself a set of those. Let's see, what else do we have? So you might also want to look at motor mounts. So if you often feel like, like you're missing shifts a lot or you feel some weird vibrations, very good possibility, especially if they're original, that these could need replacing. Um, speaking of other mounts, you may also want to look at your differential bushings in the back of the car. Um, those, or I guess I could say bad differential bushings or just weirdly stiff ones like a Delrin or solid or polyurethane. A lot of times that can cause a really weird shifter feel and just some weird undo vibrations. <sighs> Let's see, what else here? Going down the list. Um, you also want to check your exhaust heat shields, especially for our folks in rust prone areas like the Northeast. A lot of times the spot welds on those um, heat shields, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, those can become broken off and cause a rattle that's kind of hard to track down. Um, let's see. So another thing, last thing here on just poorly or, or I guess commonly overlooked maintenance is your hood latch. Uh, right in here, oftentimes this can become worn out, same as the door latches. The fingers on there, if they're worn out or misaligned, it might be really hard to close your hood or might also cause a lot of rattles. So that's an easy place to look for. Okay, so one other thing to note is sometimes weight is a good thing for comfort. So adding in like, for example, our DEI insulation kit, like this kind of material can damp a lot of uh, vibrations or just other sounds that you might feel without, say, more insulation in your car. Um, so a lot of times you can put some of this uh, sticky stuff right in your door panels. A lot of the flat parts of your door, you'll get more of a solid sounding door rather than like something that jiggles a lot. Like if you didn't have my mirror. Um, that can go, you can put insulation in um, the chassis of the car and the sticky stuff, the flat kind of non-ribbed parts. It's the best way to put that transmission tunnel, that kind of stuff. Um, another thing is an ATI damper. So sometimes race car parts can be good for your car. An ATI damper isn't necessarily reserved for the 500 horsepower track monsters. The BP and B6 engines that we have in our NAs and NBs, uh, they rattle around like a can of angry bees, as we're all familiar. So putting in an ATI damper in there in will help calm a lot of those vibrations and really just make your engine just a lot smoother. Not quite like rotary or Lexus V8 smooth, but a lot better than what it is already. Um, also, um, if you have a couple thousand dollars just sitting around burning a hole in your pocket, you might also want to get a removable hardtop for your car. Um, NAs and NBs specifically, you might want to look for an NB hardtop that has this insulation or a headliner, I guess I could call it. Um, that might damp those sounds a little bit more, but if all you can get your hands on is an NA hardtop, that's not a terrible idea either. Um, speaking of tops, um, if you are only a soft top person or you're too cheap to get a hard top, um, if you are looking for a new soft top, it might be a good idea to get a canvas soft top rather than a vinyl soft top. The canvas is a little bit thicker, heavier material, and it might damp those sounds a little bit more than if it were vinyl, for example. So. Probably not as big of an improvement as like the hard top, obviously, but something that's quantifiable. Hmm. Let's see, going to a, a bit more, I guess, pricey upgrades you can do is anything you can do with chassis stiffening is a really good idea. So chassis bracing in, in general for any Miata for pretty much any use is just pretty much a go for anything. So that goes for, you know, like frame rail braces, butterflies, strong arm, shock tower brace, rear cannon brace, roll bar, anything you can really think of is never a bad idea to put in any car. Um, to put it relatively simply, 
Think of an old noodley chassis as an undamp spring. And if you hit a big bump or something or some undulation in the road, a lot of that energy in an old noodley chassis like this one might send a lot of that energy into the chassis and kind of shake it almost like a shockwave effect rather than letting a suspension do its job. Um, on that note, oftentimes if you have a stiff suspension on your car already that's just beating the crap out of you, stiffening up your chassis might take the ride to back-breaking disaster into something that's a bit more bearable. Um, Keith's probably better at explaining all the uh, benefits to chassis stiffening than I am, so I'll probably refer you to one of his recent videos, and I'm assuming Travis will link that down in the description for me. And otherwise, the wrong brand obviously, but door bushings are also a very good idea to put in your car for NAs and NBs especially, but NCs and NDs can benefit from this. Technically speaking, they do have a benefit for chassis stiffening, but their main benefit is really just to calm some rattles in your car, like if your door rattles or something along those lines, a lot of times that can solve quite a bit of those, surprisingly so. So as far as bang for your buck upgrades to have just a more comfortable experience, door bushings really can't be beat. <sighs> All right. And now, uh, most of us in the Miata community don't really like to add weight to their car, so here's some things that you can lighten up on your car to make it more comfortable. And some more, you know, race car parts are sometimes good for your car kind of things. Um, so, first things first, just getting rid of as much unsprung weight as you can is a really good idea. So, going with a lighter or potentially smaller wheel, like for example, this 14 inch BBS wheel that came on the early NAs, a lot of times these, I'm, I'm fairly certain, I wanna say they are the lightest wheel offered from stock on any Miata for all generations. I could be wrong there, so correct me if I'm wrong. Um, a, going with a smaller or lighter wheel, like a 15 inch or a 14 inch wheel here on an NA or NB, or maybe like a 16 inch wheel on an NC or ND, is an easy way to run a larger or softer sidewall and reduce unsprung weight. Again, I'll probably refer you to Keith's recent video about unsprung weight to get a better explanation. Uh, link will be in the bio for that as well. All right, so another place to remove some unsprung weight is your brakes. So if you wanna go the less expensive route and you have like an NA or NB, you could go with a set of NA6 brakes, for example, that have the nine inch rotors and matching calipers, which are smaller and lighter than the NA8 and NB non-sport brakes and obviously the larger NB sport brakes. Um, or if you're a big baller, um, you can go with one of our Willwood brake kits, the little big brake kit for the NA and NB saves as much as four pounds per side in the front and three pounds per side in the rear. And to um, rattle off some other stats to you, uh, NCs, you can save as much as six pounds per corner in the front and one and three quarter pounds in the rear per wheel. And for the NDs, it can be as much as just under five and a half pounds per wheel in the front and 3.85 pounds per wheel in the rear in the ND. So not insignificant weight savings. Um, other stuff, now probably a bit of a stretch, but just hear me out. Um, think of just big name luxury companies, you know, Rolls Royce, Bentley, Maybach. What do they have in common? Lots of power, obviously, or effortlessly wafting, if you will. So there you go. That's your excuse to get a turbocharger on your car. Have fun with that. Um, quick shameless plug for our turbo hush kit. If you are turbocharged and you have an NA8 or NB with our stage one turbo kit, it's basically an insulated box that calms the whooshing and hissing turbo noise that turbos make. So kind of more stealthy or sleeper like. So make of that what you will. All right, so that's my spiel. We're gonna go over some questions that we had pre this video uh, from all the socials. So first things first, any tips for driving a commute on several miles of dirt road? Um, 
I guess that's a bit of a loaded question. I don't know if I have an obvious answer or for obvious things you could do on a dirt road versus a pavement road. Um, I suppose if it's a bumpy dirt road going with a suspension that has more travel, um, could be a better idea, it's just so you're spending less time on the bump stops. That'd probably be my guess. Other than that, pretty much the same stuff that you would anywhere else. Um, another thing here is methods to increase leg room if the flies want to stop eating me. Um, I guess I'm not really too sure. Um, I don't know of anything that could substantially improve leg room. Um, maybe a set of like aftermarket seats or something like that could sit you farther back and you might be able to extend your leg room that way. Um, and then how to lower the driver's seat in an NA. It's a good question. Um, first one, the easiest free option is just a foamectomy. So if you wanna take the seat out of your car and just carve out some foam out of it, we do have a YouTube video on that as well. If you wanna take a look at that, I'm assuming Travis will do that for me as well. Add that in the link. Um, a lot of times like our, our car, Captain Bob over there, that has a pretty substantial uh, foamectomy on it. And you do sit fairly lower in the car and it does hug your shoulders a little bit more. So it keeps you in place a little bit better. Um, I don't know if anyone or most people would quite go to that extent that we did, but it's an option and it's free and that's what we all like. Um, other than that, you can also go with like a uh, just a set of like aftermarket seats, for example. So if you have like a local Miata community to you, you could maybe ask if you can sit in some seats, see what you like, see if there's something that sits you lower, that's a bit more comfortable for you. Um, next question here is, are stiff sway bars bad for ride comfort? Uh, the answer is for our bars, no. Um, so to make the sway bars have any appreciable effect on ride quality, um, you would have to have a pretty beefy sway bar. Um, and it's way bigger than anything we carry. So for our stuff and for stock, no, it's not even a factor. Um, next question here is I replaced the window bushings, but still get a lot of rattling. Additionally, the soft top makes a bit of a ruckus one down bouncing to the beat of bumps in the road? Um, so I guess that's a, that's a good question as well. Um, first things first, this what, just picking low hanging fruit a little bit, um, is you could check if you still have your soft top stoppers that are just behind the seats there, uh, those little circle screws that you can find or circle plates. Um, that stops the soft top makes it from I guess going too far and bending the frame, maybe that could cause a rattle or a bounce sounding thing. Um, another thing you could do is you could get a soft top cover, so I think, I think they're called, um, something that can clip into the belt molding around the back of your car here and clip in on your car here and cover the soft top when it's down. Um, that may hold the soft top down a little bit better and might cause less rattles or bumps, so to speak. So maybe. Um, is there anything to help drone at higher PMs at like 80 miles per hour? Um, put an exhaust back on your car. Um, that's, a, that's the easy one. Um, or just more mufflers or sound deadening in general. Other than that, um, besides the obvious, you might even want to try putting some uh, sound damping material in your trunk. You know, sometimes that can cause some rattles back there. You might get a little bit of resonance back in your trunk area. That might help with drone a little bit. Other than that, yeah, just put some mufflers on your car. That will probably help the best or just the stock exhaust. Um, how to help with foot tunnel heat. So. That's actually good that you brought it up because I completely forgot to mention that while I was talking about our insulation here. So I have the insulation installed in my own car here and the biggest difference I made is not necessarily, or biggest difference I personally noticed, I should say, wasn't necessarily with decreased sound per se, it was a measurable decrease, um, but the biggest improvement I notice is just with transmission tunnel heat, just the hot leg syndrome. 
that you often get with uh, with these Miatas since the exhaust is right there, really close to the transmission tunnel. This stuff here, putting this in your chassis helped massively and took it from, you know, obnoxiously hot to something, kind of a theme here, a bit more bearable. Um, how much more noise comes from the transmission or that general area? Um, hopefully not much, because that might be a bigger problem for you. Um, the obvious answer here is to, one, make sure your shifter boot is not ripped in half and causing a bunch of noise in your car. Oftentimes, especially for older cars like this, the stock or original shifter boot might be ripped um, or have some tears in it or something along those lines, yeah. causing all that road noise to come through and heat. And that's obviously not a good thing if you're looking for comfort. So I take your center console off, see if that's still there. Um, if it is, if it is ripped, get it replaced. Um, and while you're in there, you might also consider our shifter insulation kit. It's the same material, but kind of stacked up on the shifter, creating a lot more insulation in that specific area. Um, I personally noticed on my personal car that it made a pretty big surprising difference. Granted, I came from like no interior, so I might be a little bit biased, but I'm a fan personally. Um, will comfort sacrifice handling performance? Um, I guess it depends. Um, some things that you do to your car can affect, or some things that you do to your car in the search of comfort and, or yeah, comfort and just plushness in general, um, will negatively affect the, or can negatively affect the, uh, the balance, I guess, in the car or the handling. I guess you should really think of it as a sliding scale, be like this side being hardcore race car, this side being just your luxury cruiser. Um, what end of the scale or what part of the scale do you want to be? Um, that's kind of more of a personal preference thing. So kind of is the answer to your question. Um, next up here, um, any advice for seat lumbar support? And this was asked for both NBs and NDs. Um, not really. Um, the stock seats, for example, there's not a ton to do. Um, you could, technically speaking, do a foamectomy and just carve out the shoulder portion. Um, so you're sitting a little bit better, um, or I guess a little bit farther back in the seat in the shoulder areas. Maybe it's supporting your back a little bit more. Um, other than that, probably the best thing to do if you're looking specifically for lumbar support is easy option, just get a pillow. Those are pretty cheap. Um, or you could go on just your Miata forms locally and see if there's someone that wants, that will let you sit in their aftermarket seat or something like that. Maybe one of those has adjustable lumbar support or just more support there out of the box. So there you go. Um, and lastly, um, is electric cruise control worth adding if your car didn't come with cruise control? Probably not. No, at least in a Miata, um, most of the cruise control kits out there, at least electric cruise control, don't deliver the same performance that the stock cruise control would be. Um, most, I want to say, if not all, US spec NA and NB Miatas came with the physical wiring to put the factory cruise control in there. Possibly not Mazda Speeds, now that I think of it. Um, so the best thing to do rather than getting an electric cruise control is to just find your favorite salvage parts dealer um, and just get a used, known good used cruise controls kit from just a factory car. So that's all I have for questions. Do we have any other questions from the audience? Nothing? Okay. Well, in that case, if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. As always, thanks for watching. We do new videos every Thursday at 2 p.m. Mountain Time. And if you have a topic you'd like to see us cover, leave it in the comments. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.